Hey, welcome back to my um, texture channel. In this Java into a session, we need to discuss about one of the fundamental question. So this question will be asked in most of the Java interviews uh, to make sure how good the candidate in the fundamental of code Java. So th that is why the interviewer is trying to ask this question. So the question is about what is the contract between the equals and has code method and when do we really need to override those methods what happened if you know i override only the equals or only the has code so what is the behavior uh, what happens what is the impact so they want to know from you all these things to understand how you know strong you are on the fundamental so let me um, go through each one of these. So to start with, let's see like what is the contract between the equals and has code. So the contract is straightforward. Okay, the contract number one is when two strings are equal, or when two objects are equal. When we say two objects are equal, the has code must be equal. There is no way they cannot be they cannot be equal. When we say two strings or two objects are equal, then has code must be equal. Okay. But a vice versa, let's say when the two strings having the same has code or two objects having the same has code, it is not necessary. Those two strings or two objects need to be equal. That is not necessary. So it's a straightforward the contract number one says when two strings are equal the has code need to be equal I when I say need to be must be equal contract number two is when two strings has code is equal it doesn't need that those two strings need to be equal it doesn't need like that's not mandatory okay so, so that is the contract number two so let's you know theoretically prove that how those contracts like how we can verify those contracts right so in this picture okay let's say i'm having a bucket okay? so basically yeah we store all the objects in a bucket right and this bucket okay the bucket is generated based on the hash code Let's say this bucket is responsible to collect all the objects which is having the has code one. Let's assume okay, this bucket is going to collect all the objects which is having the has code one. So now the bucket is ready, it is just waiting for the objects, okay. Um waiting for to collect the objects which is having the has code one. So now I'm going to create three string objects. Okay, S1 as you know Tom and S2 as another Tom and S3 as a RAM. Okay, let's say the Tom and RAM is going to return a hash code as one. So since they're going to return the hash code one, they all you know comes into the same bucket, right? So since all these things are going to return the hash code one, so this bucket is responsible for handling the objects with has code one right so all these objects like all these string objects will be captured in the stored in the bucket one okay so what it says now so what what we are seeing here now so the two strings right s1 and s2 which is actually equal okay logically they are equal right tom and tom which is actually equal so that says when two strings are equal, okay, the has code, the has code must be equal. That's right, right? Since the two strings are equal and they are they belong to the same bucket, they cannot, you know, the string with term one cannot belong to another bucket. It always need to come to a bucket which is responsible to take that any object with has code one, right? So that's a contract number one. Two strings are equal, the has code must be equal. Okay. The contract number two, where 
S2 and S3, two different strings, right? So they have an equal hash code, but they are actually not equal strings, right? So that is a contract number two, which means like when the hash code is equal, that doesn't mean that string need to be equal. That is a contract number two. I hope you are clear, right? The contract number one says two strings are equal, means hash code must equal. Contract number two says has code of two strings are equal but that doesn't mean that so no we all know like the objects by default is giving the override and equals in the third party so we all want to understand before getting in depth okay we want to, to understand what is the default method does default equals and has code do right so for any object okay the default equals always cover the memory location of two objects okay and at the same time the hash code always return the memory location of that particular object okay so that is the default implementation so now we want to think about can we use those default implementation or when is the actual scenario we want to overwrite those default implementation and we want to give our own implementation so what is that exact scenario that is what we want we want to understand okay so for that okay for that let me go with an example right i'll go with my code okay so what i'm trying to do here i'm having an employee class with two properties name and age I'm going to create two objects e1 and e2 with um, same name and age okay so I'm going to store all these employees in a data structure okay. I'm going to choose the set we yeah, set to don't allow the duplicate right so after adding when I try to run this program the size is 2 the size is 2 layers Technically speaking, that is right. The size is two. They are these two because of the default implementation of equals and has code. These two objects e1 and e2, right? Those two are different, right? But logically, from the business perspective, okay, we know those two employees are actually not different. They belong to it. These two objects belong to the same employee. We know that, right? So, so we don't want the set to store the two, you know, two objects for the same employee. So, so this is the exact scenario. So, in this scenario, we want to override the equals and as per method. So, this is the exact scenario when we want to override the equals and as per method. Okay. So let's say I am going to override only the equals method. So this is a default implementation of equals method. Okay. So what I am doing here? Okay. I'm just making sure whether if it is it is not null and it belongs to the same object class. Okay. So all those basic checks and then I am comparing the age and the name and based on that I am returning two. It is a default implementation of equals. So now let me run, right? So I am expecting the equals to return true, okay? And the size need to be one, but still the size is two. Why? Because you no, know, this is not actually satisfying the contract one, right? When two objects are equal, means the hash code must be equal but as per the default implementation okay the hash code is retaining the memory location of v1 and the memory location of e2 the memory location of v1 is something different and memory location of e2 is something different and set always you know makes so the set always make sure the contract you know is valid but in this case the contract is not valid so that is why you want to override the hash code also okay. 
So now I have overridden the hash code. And now when I run this program, yes, so finally we got it. So, so this is the exact scenario when we want to override but as code and equals method. Okay. So um this is from the picture perspective, right? So initially what is happening without overriding the equals and as code, each one you know um returning a different each one is actually created in a different uh, uh, buckets we are each one returning a different hash code so each belongs to different buckets and that's why both are different so we want to return a hash code in such a way both of these need to get into one bucket right and then on top of that we have a equals method to compare each attributes to make sure these two objects are equal so that is so this is the exact scenario when you want to override the equals and all as code method okay the next one scenario is okay so what is the third question what happened when we override only equals and as code so that is also covered one more stuff okay what happens if i am going to return always you know a consistent value for the as code like let's say what happened if I return always return one. What will happen, right? So what happen is nothing going to nothing serious going to happen. Like from the output perspective, you won't be seeing any difference. Okay. Like the set always going to save one. Like even though you have in number of employees, the set always going to save one or like that depends like de that depends upon the properties so you won't see the difference in the output perspective okay? but the actual impact is on the performance because what will happen we are trying to dump too many objects in the same bucket so the search algorithm need to search for you know the correct object and then it need to do all those validation so the search takes more time when we have too many objects dumped in the same packet that is why we need to be very careful when overriding the hash code method okay we need to make sure we are retaining some valid valuable hash code okay to make sure we have a no relevant number of buckets no, too many of too much buckets is also another problem like for let's say like for each employee i'm going to create a bucket that is also a problem because going into each bucket and searching for the correct object that is also you know it's adding too much complexity in terms of search for the search algorithm right? so you always need to return a hash code in such a way we always return a relevant number of um we always end up in creating a relevant number of bucket so that that is how we, we need to think when we try to override a hash code method i hope you all understood um the fundamental of the equals and hash code how that works